Hey folks, Craig Hawks, Small Fry Aquatics. Here today to talk about the AquaClear series of filters. Uh, what we have in front of us here is an AquaClear 70. Um, it's a power filter and, and it does a bunch of stuff. And we're gonna we're gonna go through this mainly because one of the guys um, online uh, had a failure of his filter and you know provided some. A little bit of flooding in his maybe a lot of flooding in his fish room and I've had the very same thing and so I want to um, uh, talk to you about how these filters work and how you can avoid uh, the same problem so this is a brand spanking new AquaClear 70 I'm going to open it up and take you through all the pieces and parts then we're gonna go over to the aquariums and I'm going to show you uh, some of the ways I have things set up and some of the mistakes I've made and and have learned from okay hang on be back with you in a minute I'm gonna open up the box okay the cellophane's off the box or the wrapper I'm dating myself here I don't know I think anybody calls it cellophane anymore so let me show you what you get in the box the lid to the aqua clear of which I have a fine collection because I never use them although I should this is the filter itself I'm gonna have to wrestle it out of here and we're gonna go through the pieces in a second but that's the filter and then you get a few things um, in the box the instructions are at the bottom one of the things you always want to look for is the leveler now they sometimes hide them depends on who puts them together sometimes they're inside the filter down here sometimes they actually mount them where they were supposed to at the bottom sometimes it's laying in here sometimes it's in this box over I'm trying to see what I'm showing you this box over here too so make sure you have it okay let's go through this this is the media basket be very aware that there's kind of two stops here's the first one down here there's the second one there many people including myself love to quote turbocharge these filters and add a third piece up here you can do it but that's where you start getting into some trouble and we're going to talk about that okay This is the, um, the suction tubes that come in. When you're putting together these, they're not always the same. I'm trying to look around the fish room here. Oh, maybe they are all the same. So the nipple, when you put it in, it actually goes inside of here and it goes like, like this. I'll show you more clearly in a second. So you want that nipple on the inside here. You don't want it this way. There is a small but significant diameter difference between this tube and this tube. You will find it very, very difficult to put your intake tube on this side. It will be more easily fit on this side. And, and trust me, I've, I've watched people try and get these things on this nipple side here, and you'll crack the tube. So here's a sec, so I, you know, essentially just friction fit it on. You get a second too, in case you have a particularly deep tank, like a 29 or 55, something like that. I don't have that, so I don't use them. Let me grab one other thing here I should have thought to do before um, I started the video. If you do not put something over this end, over this, uh, you, you, you run the risk of two things. Fry can get in there, small fish can get in there, and any loose vegetation gets in there and jams it up. What I like to do is put a, um, well, as you can see, and, and I kind of did this on purpose for you. I close up the bottom. These are just a sleeve that's the same size as this input. I use a tie wrap down here. That way, all of the um, vegetation that's floating around the tank gets caught in here. I can just kind of pull it off as I clean things up or leave it on depending on what you want to do. But if you let this end build up with green stuff, you will very quickly restrict the input flow. And so I put that on like that and we're off to the races. And again, it's just another friction fit. This goes on like this. You pop it in, you're gonna hear it kind of click. And then you got a couple of adjustments here. Down inside, you can put it right over the top of the impeller, 
or you can put it to the side and do sort of a shared thing. That's completely up to you how you want to put that together. Water will come in here, pass to this side through the various filter medias and out and spill over here. We'll get to the filter medias in a second. As long as I've got this put in my hand, I want to do this and I'm going to take this guy out. A lot of people wonder about the impeller. Um, they start to use their filter. They've been using it for a while. This end is fine, that, but they're not getting any flow out. They clean out all the media. What the heck is the problem? See that propeller down there? That's the impeller. Twists around, creates a suction and a vacuum. If mulm, detrius, or other things get inside of there, you're going to have a problem. It comes off and gets cleaned very simply. This is from the outside. You give it a half turn this way. Um, so if you're looking from the bottom, you're going clockwise. If you're looking from the top, you're going counterclockwise. But it's, you know, really just like a quarter turn. You know, sort of wiggle it off. And there's your impeller. Impellers work off of a motor with a magnet inside them. And so this guy, if you get a hold of it, and, and you'll have to pull it a little bit because, like I say, it is magnetic. You can clean this off. You can clean off the inside of that and you just slide them right back on it's it's just that simple okay there we go make sure she spins a little bit you put it right back on the same way you got it off quarter turn on or half turn however many it is and you're off to the races one of the things i want to warn you about don't try and take this off while the filter is hooked up to your aquarium you still have vacuum, or I'm sorry, uh, siphon on here, and you it will come furiously rushing out. Now, sometimes you want that, sometimes you don't. If you're in a position where you don't really care, you can put something in it. You can sort of pull that out, do a quick cleaning, and push her back on. So that's what you got going on there. If there's any other pieces to this you want to know, let me know. Um, I'm going to open up this right over here. You get a sponge with it, a sponge. Wish you got more, but you don't. You get a carbon cartridge. Do not open this up unless you're near a sink. You will get carbon particles everywhere and it's gonna be like when you open up a bag of charcoal for the grill. You wanna be outside. Rinse this bad boy off until it runs clear. These are your little ceramic pieces. And they give you a little mesh bag to put them inside of. Again, you're gonna have dust everywhere, so you wanna Put this, and sometimes, you know, there is a little bit of a gimmick here. I, I'm not showing you at all, am I? Okay, open it up, turn it down like that. Put the bag inside of there, and then open the bag of ceramic material, shake it down inside, do it over a sink, rinse it off. They give you a little red clip. There it is. Half of it just went on the floor. I never use it. I just take this and tie a little quick knot in it. It all expands out. You can put them in in any order you want. You can start with the ceramic on the bottom, the charcoal next, then the sponges. Um, I only use the charcoal when I open up a filter first time. I never bother with charcoal after that. That's just me. Um, kind of looking around me here. I'm. I should have a big sheet of foam and I don't. So I'm gonna back up. I'll be back with you in a minute. Okay, I'm back. This is a poly foam. I don't remember exactly the number of holes per inch. I'll try and remember to put that in the description. Um, what I'll usually do is you're literally just cutting one to fit inside of here. You can literally tear this apart with your hands or use a razor blade or a pair of scissors. I just kind of gnarl away at them. And so when you assemble all of that um, and put it on the tank, I will show you in a second what you get. Hang on. Okay, here we are at the, um, got the AquaClear filter. This is not the one I unboxed. This is one that's um, been in action for a while. And this one has all the um, sims I've told you about and all the good things I told you about too. So let's start, this will probably be easier to see at this end. 
If you don't put a sponge on, that's what you're gonna get. You're gonna get a blocked up intake tube and you're gonna get re um, reduced output flow. And this is, sorry, this is a, you know, sort of production room down here. That may look like adequate flow, but I can get double that flow if I clean the stuff out, okay? Here's the second problem. The leveler came out on this one. Uh, there it is sitting right there. Didn't know it at the time and didn't actually see the water until there was, you know, I kept looking at the tank and thinking, wow, this water's evaporating awfully quickly. Then eventually I found the water on the floor. What happened is, is because I have this thing filled up with filter foam, and you, so it's got the usual things that I told you about. It's got the uh, ceramic on the bottom, the uh, charcoal in the middle, and then I've got a double sponge. This double sponge is way up to the top, which forces the water level all the way up to here, and it was spilling out the back. So what do you do about that? Well, put the leveler back in, that helps. The second thing you can do is remove this piece of sponge. And as you can see, that quickly takes the level down. The choice is yours. It will work either way. The other problem you can get is a leak down at this seal. So be very careful that you've got this pushed in the way it's supposed to be. The last problem I've seen out of these is if you get too much pull from the siphon and not enough push out. In other words, your media gets blocked up here. You gotta clean that out. So these are all the things you need to watch for, okay? Let me, um, I'm gonna take you around the fish room and show you some filters that are jammed up and what it looks like and some filters that are doing just fine. Hang on. This is a smaller than, than the, um, this is a, what do I wanna say? This is an aqua clear. I don't know, 30, 40, something like that. See how it's just very, barely trickling? Well, the media is all jammed up. There's duckweed in the filter in the intake. There's duckweed down here. That's what it looks like when you let that get out of hand, which I have let it get out of hand. Hang on, one more. let's look at this one. We haven't overfilled it with media. Water seems to be coming in. Not much has been coming out. I've got the sponge down here. So what's the problem? Well, the problem is the sponge on the bottom is full. That guy needs to, I'm trying to point with my finger, but you're not seeing that. The sponge at the bottom needs to be cleaned out and all will be better. Here's another one. And I use multiples on these on a tank. This guy needs cleaned out too. Same problem with the sponge down here so we know what I'll be doing you know for the rest of the day and um, there you go and last but not least this is good flow out of a aqua clear filter this is exactly what you're looking for all right I'll be back with you in a second Okay, just one last uh, in summation here, what I, what I wanted to talk to you about is, these filters are often portrayed as both biological and as uh, mechanical filters. I tend to use these more as mechanical filters um, as opposed to biological. Your mileage may vary and your needs may be different too. So be aware of that. And what I try to do is if you're, if you're going toward a um, biological filter, you want to add more of the ceramic rings. You want to be mindful of um, keeping the bio load going. You want to be also careful of getting good flow because as, as wonderful as these filters are, uh, if I go on like a, and I'm putting my arms out like it, if I go on a four foot long tank, like a 33 long or something, I'll need to actually put, um, hang on back filters probably four of them across because they, they will wind up just sort of churning on a particular area or putting a power head in there to keep things moving around. So that's sort of, there's upsides and downsides for all of these things. And that's why if you're sneaking peaks in the background, um, let me see if I can get out of the way and see what's back here. So sponge filter, um, hang on back. 
Hang on back over there. Same tank. These are just 20 longs. Sponge filter. Um, if I were able to take you down, and I'm not going to go dorking around with the camera, I also have, um, geez, little, little plastic filters with filter floss in them. They all serve a purpose, and it's all part of the final product of getting the water clean as you humanly can. Keep your nitrates down, your nitrate, nitrites down, your nit you know, you know the whole water chemistry thing, right? So the idea of this video was not to give you a tutorial on that stuff, but it was more to talk about the filters and what can go wrong with them. But I kind of, you know, I know went off on the in the weeds here. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I sure could use you doing that. Hit the thumbs up, comment in the, um, put comments in the comments, you know, depending on what you think. Okay, take care. See you later. Bye.